Ask any computer science student if they like lead code. They'll probably say no. Still, lead coding makes up a big portion of their time and experience as a computer science student because you have to lead code so you can get a job. If you don't lead code, you won't get an interview and you won't get a job. And if you don't get a job, you'll be broken, depressed on the streets, which is very obviously horrible. Lead coding has possessed people's lives so much that some of them will even lead code outside of their dorm while it's burning down on their phones. The need to grind lead code comes from the fact that big tech companies, among others, continually ask lead code style questions in some form during their recruiting process, whether this be in an online coding assessment or in person in a Zoom interview, whatever. They'll be asking these questions and students then decide, hey, well, if I just grind lead code for a little while, then I can get a job at one of these companies and it will be worth it. So they make that decision because it's better to spend that time rather than not get a job. Still, that doesn't mean lead code is the best way to conduct these interviews, and it definitely doesn't mean that the students enjoy it. I'm going to go over some of the different styles and types of technical interviews that I've seen, and if they beat out lead code, then lead code sucks. And even if they don't beat out lead code, lead code still sucks, don't get me wrong, but it's just a necessary evil. Let's get straight into it. Let's start off by talking about lead code style interviews. You'll first encounter these in a coding assessment online and on a platform like HackerRank or CodeSignal. They're very simple. You just type out solutions to algorithmic problems, submit them, and if you get a high enough score, then you may move on to the next round. Although this usually doesn't happen because, you know, companies actually do the resume review after the online coding assessment. Why do they do that, you ask? Well, because it makes it easier for them. If you know they can cut down their applicant pool in half by just having people take this online coding test, then it's easier for the recruiters to go to and pick the resumes that actually match the requirements for the role. Incredibly annoying, but I understand it from a business perspective, even if I despise it as an applicant. After that initial coding assessment, you'll probably see lead code one more time in a technical interview with a real person, whether it be over Zoom or in real life. And it's basically the same thing, except this time around, you probably won't write your code. You might not even be writing real code. You might be writing on a whiteboard and you just have to be able to explain your thought process behind the solution out loud to another human being, which might be scary to some of you computer science majors. You've probably heard plenty of people complain about lead code, but here's what I think are some valid drawbacks to the approach of using lead code for like technical screenings. First of all, it's usually not very representative of what you actually know about software engineering. It's not representative of how well you'll perform on the job because there's not a whole lot of correlation between being able to solve like divide and conquer problems and being able to build whatever scalable software you need. Probably not a lot of a direct links in between them, but in general, in my opinion, I think people that do well enough on lead code can be taught very quickly how to do well in software. But on the other hand, there are probably lots of great people that can build great software that might fail a lead code interview because they're just not very good at it. Number two is, uh, I think that's about it really. Sure, you might say, hey, lead code's really annoying, lead code's really boring. But I don't think those are valid complaints or cons when it comes to lead code, even though those may be valid experiences. Lead code style interviews do have a few pros though. First of all, you have the rules of the game. You know exactly what you need to know, you know exactly how you need to say it, and all you have to do is just practice. Put in the hours and you'll be able to pass these interviews most of the time. Number two, the rules of the game are great and they make for very fast processes. The recruiters and the recruiters save a lot of time because you only have to do stuff in the interview. It's very easy to compare different candidates and you can move on with the process very quickly, which is great when you're multi interviewing for different companies at the same time. With pros and cons out of the way, it's probably safe to say that for something to be a better approach than lead code, it needs to be both better at picking good software engineers and maintain that same speed that lead code allows companies and people that are applying to companies to have. With that being said, let's get into some alternatives. Take home projects are another way that companies might decide to assess applicants like you and me. I haven't done a take home project exactly, but I did something pretty similar for a company called HubSpot and this is how it works. Suppose you're applying to a company that uses React a lot, then they would give you a React project to do over the course of 72 hours a week, whatever. However long they give you, you have to build out a React app. You build out that app, you deploy it, you host it, you send them the link to your code on GitHub or maybe just a zip file. They look over your code, they're like, hey, this guy's writing pretty clean code. They look at your project and be like, hey, they wrote a good project, it works as expected. And then if they think you know your code is good, then they'll move you on to the next interview or give you the job, whatever. Pretty straightforward, right? Take home projects sound great, but I do think there are a lot of drawbacks. First of all, you have to spend a lot of time on them, or at least you have to spend more time than you would on a lead code interview. Lead code interviews are an hour, maybe a take home project takes you 10. Even with studying accounted for, when you're studying for a lead code interview, that's applicable to every single company. Whereas if you're building a take home project, you have to do that for every single company you're applying to. Now imagine you're applying to five companies at the same time and all of them assign you a take home project, whereas five companies and you have to just lead code for all five of them. There's a lot of time saved lead coding, whereas take home projects take a lot more time. 
Also, in some cases, depending on the size of the company and the repute of the company, they might just make you do like a free feature for them. So be careful when you're reading out what you know what you have to do for your take home project. Maybe they're just getting free labor out of you. I don't think that's very likely, but it is a possibility. Even though they have some cons, they have a very large pro in that if you do well on that take home project, then it's almost guaranteed that you would be a good fit on the team as long as the team designed the take home project well. It's very good at picking out people who know what they're doing and people who can write good software. It's great for that. Another style of technical interview that I like is called the resume interview, or at least that's what I call it. It's exactly what it sounds like. You join the Zoom meeting and the interviewers ask you questions about the technical skills you have listed on your resume that they're interested in, or just technical skills that they think would be relevant for somebody that wants to join their team. You answer these questions well enough, then boom, you get advanced to the next round or you get the offer. Very simple, doesn't require a lot of time from anybody. So let's talk about some of the cons. I think the biggest con affects the interviewers and not the interviewees. It might be easy to tell if somebody's faking it, but oftentimes you'll come across somebody that's just like faking their way through the entire interview process. And then you might not even know until after they've been hired. They might have crammed everything they need to know a few hours before the interview. And I guess that could be a benefit if somebody can cram what they need to know an hour or two before the interview, then I'm sure they can learn exactly what they need to know while they're on the job. But still, it opens the door to somebody just cheating their way through the interview by just answering questions enough so that the people are like, huh, this guy knows what he's doing and he still doesn't know what he's doing at all. Of course, if the interviewers are experienced enough, they'll probably be able to catch this. The positives in this approach are great for people like you and me, the people that are actually applying to these companies. You don't really have to do any prep because if you put something on your resume, then you know what you're talking about, right? You didn't just put hello world in a language and then you put it on your resume. Surely you didn't do that, right? Still, it's great, you know, speed, you don't have to do prep outside, it takes less time than lead code, it's very easy for the companies in that sense too, they don't really have to do prep, their employees don't have to spend hours going through a code submission and just making sure it looks good, very easy for people on both sides. System design interviews are also pretty common, they're exactly what they sound like, you get asked to design a system and then explain your thought process behind the design and then they judge you based on whether or not it scales, how good the design is, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Still, it's similar to lead code in the sense that you do have to study for it or you probably have to study for it, but it's definitely more related to what you're actually gonna be doing on the job as a software engineer, so it definitely has that going for it. As a quick disclaimer, I've only gone through two of these interviews or like two of these interviews, and I'm still a CS major in school, so I haven't seen a lot of them because you usually see these once you start applying for new grad positions and not internship positions. Oh, also, they will usually accompany a lead code round and they're not really standalone or they haven't been in my experience, but I don't see any reason why they couldn't be standalone. I've already mentioned the biggest pro, that being good at system design is probably a good indicator that you're gonna be good at software engineering, so it's probably great for companies that wanna optimize for that, and it's probably great for people that don't wanna be doing lead code. Additionally, the speed is probably on par with lead code because it's essentially the same process. You just have different things that you're testing for. The biggest con for most applicants is that they'll have to study for it, but you also have to study for lead code. So I guess pick your poison. Note, these aren't the only ways to get jobs in tech. Some companies hire you based on how well you contribute to open source. Different companies have different metrics. You know what I'm saying. But with everything considered, is there something that beats lead code? In my opinion, there isn't. Take home projects are great, or at least they sound great, but they take so much time and it's so much of a time commitment that if you are applying to even more than one company, it's just gonna be sucking your soul out for the process of weeks where you're interviewing for different companies. That would probably suck, but if you're just applying to one company out of a few and they give you a take home project, whereas the other ones are lead coding, you could probably manage that. Still, it's up to you to decide whether or not take home projects work for you and your company, I guess. I'm just a CS major, why are you listening to me? System design interviews could be great to replace lead code because they actually test software related skills and you don't need to know everybody's algorithmic skills, but that would be harder to test newbies on, people that are, you know, haven't had an internship yet, haven't had any real work experience. It's hard for them to have an understanding of how to design large systems. But still, if you're a senior engineer, I don't really understand why people ask you lead code questions. Your experience probably speaks for itself and system design interviews are probably good enough and I don't know why lead code is needed for senior engineers. Resume interviews are great to me as an applicant. If every company wants to do a resume interview and just ask me things based on my resume and not have me do lead code, I would be all down for that. I think that's actually great. And it's just up to companies to decide whether or not they're okay with like that one person faking their way in. Also, there are also probably people that fake their way in by just memorizing lead code solutions and never actually learning how to write good code.
So with all that considered, lead code is the least evil out of these interviews. Sure, it sucks, but it's the least evil out of many options. Now that you know the rules of the game, you might as well go play and grind that lead code. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe. It helps me in the channel out a lot. And leave a comment telling you whether you agree or disagree. I'm very eager to hear your thoughts. Anyways, YouTube is telling you to go watch this video. So I think you should go do that because I've heard they have very good recommender systems. Anyways, once again, thank you so much for watching. Peace out.